four players on table one and three on table two. Matches of three out of five games to 11. Hey, Joe. Can you hear me? Headset check. Oh, it works now. Okay. Are we ready to go live? Two side. Which side? This side? Yes, sir. Two minute warm up. You still can hear me? Singles round robin. Mr. Dunn from Brown versus Mr. Amadoui from Liberty. Best of five games. First game, Mr. Dunn to serve, 0-0. Zero, zero. All right, good morning and welcome to the 2016 TMS College Table Tennis Championships in beautiful Round Rock, Texas at the Round Rock Sports Center. I'm Joe Wells and alongside me in the booth this weekend is Brian Song. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Joe. Up uh, first we have the men's singles round robin matches. We've got Masan Amadouit of Liberty versus Charles Dang of Brown. But before we get into this match, Brian, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about how, you're, uh, how you got here to the championships and how you ended up sitting alongside me this weekend. Hey, Joe. I was lucky enough to win the NCTTA The Voice contest that they held earlier in the year. I sent in my voiceover over a YouTube clip, and I believe there have been four winners. It's myself, Dylan Lay, Andy Nguyen, and Kevin Korb. And we're all here today to uh, see some great table tennis. 
Yeah, I know it's going to be a really exciting time because we've got some new faces that are going to be here doing some announcing. You already mentioned earlier that uh, Andy, Kevin, and uh, Dylan are going to be joining us as well. But not to forget, Barney Reed will be sitting in with us also throughout the weekend. Unfortunately, we want to send a, a big shout-out to uh, Adam Barbaro. Unfortunately, he can't be here with us this weekend. Unfortunately, he had previous commitments. But uh, we wish him all the best, and we look forward to seeing him in the future. So right now, this uh, first singles round robin is underway, and it looks like Charles is off to a great start at 5-2 in the opening game. Yeah, Charles is the favorite player here if you just go off of rating. That being said, Messon is one of those players who hasn't played, practiced recently, and has just started back practicing a lot. Yeah, and obviously, you know, you, you think a little bit about this match. He must be... Pretty nervous his first year at College Nationals. He's on the main stage here. He's playing against the higher rated opponent in this opening round, Robin. And like you said, he hasn't had a lot of uh, match experience, match play here recently. But uh, we imagine he's going to fight through. I, I know we read his bio a little bit earlier, and he's uh, spent some time in the military. Yeah, Messon is actually quite a bit older. He is a, currently a medical student at Liberty. And there we go again, the same side underserved from Dang of Brown. He leads 10-4 here in the opening game. He takes that backhand drive pretty well up the line there. Comfortable lead, um, winning game number one, 11-4. What do you think is going through Masan's head right now as he goes into game number two? It looks like maybe some adjustments are going to be needed on return of serve. Yeah, you saw there he popped up a few of those serves. That lefty reverse pendulum from Charles Dang's totally fooling him a number of times. He's going to have to try to get the read on that if he's going to make any inroads in this match. And also, uh, just uh, if you're just tuning in with us, this is the men's singles round robin. So on this table, number one, it's actually a group pairing. is going to be Charles Dang of Brown, Felipe Kachka of Lindenwood, Masan Amadouit of Li uh, Liberty University, and Tim Wong of UT Austin. Not to be confused with Tim Wong, a U.S. national team member. But it would be great if he could be here, but <laughs> we've got the next best thing. For sure. And as the umpires come out of the game timeout, Amadouid of Liberty to serve. It looks like Messon likes to stay a little bit off the table and try to hit some heavy loops. Dang, on the other hand, playing real close to the table, making some nice controlled blocks. And I have a feeling just after looking at that first game, going into the second one, coming out of the timeout, Messon obviously wants to be a little bit more of the aggressor here in this match. Ooh, nice. Good ripping forehand down the line and that's a shorter margin for error on that that ball there he had the whole right side of the court wide open but he decided to go behind the player down the line it also might be one of the a little bit of the advantages that uh, Ding is a lefty always tough to play a left-handed player their spins are always confusing. You don't normally play those patterns out to the backhand. And yeah. Hassan just can't get the read on that one serve there. It's topspin and it's fooling him every time. And typically the step around would be coming from the left side of the table going into the right side on the backhand side. But there you go, Hassan makes a quick adjustment on that forehand flippy. It comes into the table really fast. He's uh, tied up here at 4-all here in game number two. Just probably really wanted to give himself a chance to stay in this match as he lost that first one 11-4 uh, and never really fight, uh, quite felt comfortable. But here you see him fighting in the second game. Hassan's going to want to make a move here. Sort of the soft spot in the game at 5-all. 
he can really take a lead if he's if he's smart. And again, Basan shows that aggressive forward, and he has right up the middle. Great block. And I like the fight that I'm seeing from Basan right now. You know, he didn't let game one rattle him at all. He had a game plan going into game two. It looks like he's using that forehand a whole lot more here in this uh, second game. And I look for him to stay with that shot uh, throughout game two. A little bit of a loose serve there. He did not need that. He definitely wanted to extend that lead from 7-5. Just a touch high. And Charles Dang takes advantage with a nice flip. And that's the great thing about college table tennis is this is a men's singles round robin, which means that he has this match and two more to go. But already Amadouid is fighting for every point here, only in game number two. At 9.18 central time, you know, that's the great thing about college nationals. Everyone's here for the purpose of representing their university and themselves, and they're fighting for every single point. Hassan's going to want to be very careful here. And again, Hassan sticks with a short serve, gets a push from Dang, and he leads 10-8 now in game two with a game point here. Quick turnaround from game one. Nice comeback. There's that top spin serve again, totally fooling him. Two in a row. And just like that, Ding has turned this second game around here. We're deuce at 10 all now. I look for Masan to go with a similar pattern from earlier in the game. It's a one-two punch, serve, and then loop. That was a very nice little bit of touch there from Charles. And that's a beautiful open court uh, backhand punch there to the corner from Masan. Just when you thought he had uh, lost some of his momentum, he comes back a really, really strong return. Ooh, I don't agree with that long serve there. Charles ready for it, rips it cross court and in the weaker backhand of Masan. And just really, really impressed with the composure of Charles Deng there to be able to win that second game 13-11. He was down at one point 10-8. He saw match points, uh, excuse me, game points again, him, but he fought off uh, some really strong returns of serve there. Uh, Masan felt like he was in control. I, I looked a little bit towards the end there. He started to press with the forehand as opposed to, you know, taking his time and working his way into that game. But um, he's still, he's, he's fighting right now. He's in this match. Obviously, a lot of confidence going from game one to game two. We suspect he's going to try to do a lot of the same things. As we look at Charles Ding, we talk about a lot of our players having huge background experience. Uh, Charles actually won the under 10, 13, and 15 uh, U.S. Nationals and was on the U.S. Junior and Cadet team at one point. Uh, he stopped playing, unfortunately, as an eighth grader, took some time off. But he's back here playing college table tennis representing Brown. Yeah, college table tennis is a great way to get kids back in the sport. You know, a lot of kids, they play very hard when they're young, training insane hours, you know, and then they kind of fall off the horse a little bit. But college ta table tennis provides a great opportunity for them to get back and play in a game that they definitely, I mean, that they'd love. And that's a beautiful flip there. I mean, he came off one leg to take that ball to the open court. Just showing a whole lot of athleticism there from Charles Dang. If Messon isn't careful here, Charles is going to just completely run away with this match. I'm going to predict Charles will be as aggressive as possible. And then Messon's forehand, a little errant and long there. 
Uh, that's the one shot he does not want to see get away from him because that's what kept him in that second game. Absolutely. And at this point in the game, I think maybe a, a timeout at 5-1 in game number three. Maybe there's some nerves kicking in. He's trying to get himself motivated to get back in this, but Dang has just opened up this third game really, really strong. And you hate to really see this happen to players where they showed a lot of promise and opportunity in game two. You look like he was settling into the match a little bit, getting more comfortable, and then quickly the third game has just kind of gotten away from him. That's why table tennis is such a double-edged sport. You can win extremely quickly, and then you can lose in the blink of an eye. And the one thing that happens to a lot of players when they're playing this match, they get that early comfortable lead. They're up 2-0. Sometimes players have a tendency to relax. Hopefully we'll see here from Charles Dang. He keeps that intensity. He opened up with the first four or five points. Again, the forehand push is taking a little bit long. It's 9-2 in game three. That serve there is just really good. He can go side, under, top, every which way, and that's the end of the match right there. And the young player from Brown making quick work of Masan Amadouid of Liberty University. We're going to take a quick web timeout here and we'll be right back with you in a moment. I'm Joe Wells alongside me with Brian Song.